ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه به ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح لهذه الامه فتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يسير عنها إلا هالك يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. The description given of a stick that is used to ride a horse or a camel. The description says the area that a stick occupies, the space that it's the stick occupies in heaven is more valuable than this entire world that we live in. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, the space a stick occupies in heaven is more valuable than this entire world that you are living in. Do you know why did the Prophet Muhammad choose that example? You see, in the past, people used to use camels, horses, animals to get around. And it was a basic principle for anyone who uses the stick in riding that animal. Whenever he reaches his final destination and location, what he does is that he would throw that stick down on the ground, signaling that he has arrived, signaling that is his final destination. <coughs> Think about it. If a that small stick, what area it occupies is better than this entire world and universe that we are living in. How about you, the person who was riding on that animal, who was carrying that small stick? What kind of place is there preserved for you in heaven from Allah Almighty? <coughs> Ibrahim ibn Adham said it in a clear statement. He said, our home is heaven and we are all held captives by the devil because of our sins. Therefore, any captured person will not be relieved unless he is set free and returns back to his home. Imam Shafri used to use a cane as, or a stick as he walked. So people said to him, why do you use a stick? You are not an old person and you are healthy. He said, to remind myself that I am a traveler. <coughs> and that concept led generations of people at that time to use a cane as they walked to remind themselves they are here on earth as travelers, not people staying forever. Imam Ibn Qayyim said it in a statement and gave a description for a person who used the stick as he moved around. 
He said, this thing resembles you as you travel. And the moment that the person throws the stick and lets go of it, this means he has reached his final destination. Let me give you a brief example. If someone is staying at a hotel, and next day he is departing that country, if I might pause, if I may pause, uh, brothers in the back, please move forward because we have some brothers cannot get inside the masjid. Everybody, please can you move forward or close the space between you? We have some brothers standing up in the past. Jazakumallah khair. May Allah bless you all. The example is, and you can see it yourself, a person who is staying at the hotel and he is leaving the next day to back home. And you see that person, what he does, he tears down the walls and he removes the furniture from the room that he stayed in that hotel and he replaces the windows and the tiles and all the fittings inside that room and although yet he is leaving to his country the next day. What do you call that action? Pure insanity. <coughs> How about people who think that this world that we live in is our final world. And they put all of their efforts in this world, neglecting their basic homeland, which is heaven. What kind of action is that? That action is pure insanity. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف على سبب المسلمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان بدي I am going now to read a paragraph that is extremely critical. Everyone who is listening to me in this message, brothers and sisters, please follow up this part of the khutbah. It is simple, it is critical, and it will change your life from this moment. Our life is basically from four journeys. The first journey, it is between 60 to 70 years. As per the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the lifespan of my nation is between 60 and 70 years. And some of us died even before. The second journey is your journey inside the grave after you die. The duration of the period of that journey is probably thousands and thousands of years you will remain in your grave. The third journey is once you leave your grave into the gathering area that Allah gathers all of mankind that Allah has created in order to be judged on based on their performance in their life. And the day is measured of 50,000 years where the sun is one mile ahead from your head and you are waiting to be judged based on your actions. And the last stage is to your eternal life, either hell or heaven. Therefore, this is the critical statement. This means the 60 or 70 or less years that we live in the first part of the journey dictates the three more journeys after it. 60 to 70 years are equal to eternity in pure happiness or sadness. Your performance in the few years you will live here 
will dictate the rest of your eternal life. If you ever thought that you are a machine that gets unplugged when it dies and nothing happens, you are totally wrong. You are immortal. All of the human beings that Allah has created will live forever, but they move from one stage to another stage to another stage. Once you die, you will live in your grave thousands of years. And then again, Yawm al mahsha when you are waiting for to be judged, another 50,000 years. And then based on your actions in these few years, it will dictate your entire, entire life forever. So putting it in a, in a first great common sense, would you exchange the few years that will dictate your lifetime forever so for something of a wrongful act against the will of Allah and His commands? Would you waste your entire life for something that will bring sadness and sorrow and punishment for your entire, entire destined life that is infinite? Think again. We are living in the first stage of our life. The few days, Allah Alam, how long we will live, will dictate the rest of the, the entire infinite life we live. Bilal ibn Sa'd said, All you people of eternity, all you people who will live forever, you were not created to finish. You were created to live till eternity. And all what happens to you is you move from one homeland to another homeland, one stage to another. Allah in the Quran in Surah Muhammad said, وَيُدْخِلُهُمُ الْجَنَّةَ عَرَّفَهَا لَهُمْ Allah will admit them into paradise that Allah had made it known to them. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, elaborated on that. He said, he swears by that, that each one of you, and I ask Allah Almighty that we all go to heaven. Each one of you knows his address in heaven the same way he knows his address and of, of his home here on earth, without any direction or any address. As you enter paradise, immediately you will go to your home. It's as if you know it and you had known it before. That is why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Blessed be the strangers, the ones who live in societies where they get mistreated and misunderstood and challenged by others, and those who are against them more than the ones who support them. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we are living in an age and an era where a Muslim feels like a stranger. Those who are against him more than the ones who are supporting him. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu gave his blessing for the ones who stand up for the religion at the time of differences and times of challenge. Abu Bakr ibn Abdullah ibn Abi Maryam was asked, what is the ultimate pleasure? He said, the ultimate pleasure is when your foot is in paradise. And that what has led Muhammad bin Ali bin Abi Talib. When he said, Allah Azza wa Jal has made heaven for you as a gift and as a prize. So therefore, do not exchange your place in heaven for any place else. Therefore, brothers and sisters, as I close this khutbah, you are very dear to Allah Almighty. And our place is in heaven. It's only a few years that we get to live that will reflect in our journey of a lifetime towards eternity. It is your choice either to follow the commands of Allah and live happily ever after or else to feel sorry till the hereafter and until eternity. And I remind you of the end. If the place of the stick 
that Muslims used to use in riding a horse or a camel is more valuable than this entire world we are living in. What kind of a surprise Allah has for us in store for us in heaven? In heaven. I ask Allah Almighty what I said is a reminder for me and you. And I ask Allah Almighty that the principle of these trips and journeys, the four journeys that I've mentioned, remains in your mind and in your heart as you move around in your life and you know the value of these very expensive seconds and moments that we live that will reflect till eternity. هذا وصل وسلم على من أمرت مصرات وسلم عليه فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا وسلموا عليه تسليما وقد قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه صلاة صلى الله عليه بعشرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى